the housing market is getting a little out of hand. We just got data showing that home sales boomed in February 2024 because more people listed their homes for sale. That's good news for realtors, bankers, and home sellers, but that's not so good news for people that are thinking about buying a home because home prices also keep getting more expensive. And this is where now the White House wants to get involved. President Biden during his State of the Union said that housing is too unaffordable and he wants to create new programs to make housing more affordable. Housing is unaffordable because of two reasons. Number one, because home prices are so expensive. And number two, because interest rates have gone up so much. On the point of home prices, I just showed you that how in many neighborhoods, home prices are still rising. And when it comes to interest rates, well, the Federal Reserve Bank just came out and said that they don't want to start cutting interest rates yet because inflation is still too high. But I think this is where it's a good idea to kind of zoom out and see what is the current state of home ownership in America to put this problem in context. This is a chart from the Federal Reserve Bank showing the rates of home ownership in the United States. And while home ownership today isn't at the 2004 peak, we're also nowhere near the lows. So we're kind of in like the historical average of home ownership in America today. Now, of course, real estate is a very local game. What's happening in one neighborhood might not be happening in a different neighborhood in the country. For example, if you look at home prices around the country, home prices in the United States are still rising. But if you zoom in to Austin, Texas, what you'll see is that home prices are actually falling in Austin, Texas. And that's why in today's video, I wanna go over three things. Number one, why is housing such an important asset class for our entire economy? Number two, why does the White House wanna get involved and what does the White House want to do with the housing market now? And number three is how can we actually make the housing market more affordable? So let me start by talking about number one, why is this housing market such an important asset class for our economy. Now, I do want to let you know that for those of you who want to be real estate investors, on April 2nd, 2024, I am hosting a live, free, and virtual real estate investing workshop where I'm going to be going over my own real estate investing strategies. I'm going to be going over how I look for good locations to invest, how I'll find good properties that will cash flow, and then how I look for ways to maximize my profits. This is a completely free workshop and I would love for you to attend. So if you're thinking about investing your money in real estate or you wanna see how you can do your next deal even better, this is going to be a place where you will learn a ton. So if you'd like to join, it's completely free. All you have to do is register by clicking the link down in the description below. Just make sure you register soon because there's a limited number of people that can actually join me live. There's a few reasons why we have so many eyeballs on the housing market. The obvious reasons are because, well, everybody needs a place to live and it's a huge piece of people's expenses. Like housing is the largest expense for most Americans across the country. The second reason why housing is so important is because it provides a lot of jobs. Like it provides jobs for realtors, it provides jobs for contractors, it provides jobs for builders, it provides jobs for title companies, it provides jobs for mortgage companies, it provides jobs for property management companies. And the third reason why so many people have their eyeballs on the housing market is because many people look at the housing market as a way to create and pass on generational wealth. That if you can work to buy a home, pay it off, then you can pass this home down to your kids, now you can build this generational wealth this way. Now I'm not gonna get into the whole topic of how do you build wealth through real estate in this video, but but this is what many people believe and hope that if I can buy a home, I'll be able to pay it down and then pass this home down to my kids. This is why the housing market is so important because it affects everybody. It affects investors who are investing their money in real estate. It affects investors who are investing their monies into companies that are involved in real estate. It affects people who have jobs in real estate and it affects people that live in a home, which is, well, pretty much everybody. This is what has triggered President Biden and the White House to want to get involved with the housing market to try to make it more affordable. So let's talk about what they want to do. Now, just for full transparency, everything that I discuss is going to be directly from this White House press briefing here. The first thing that the White House talks about is that they want to make it a little bit easier for some people to qualify for a loan to get a home. It says that they're going to indefinitely extend the FHA and FFB risk sharing program, essentially making it easier to get these types of loans. And then it says that the government is going to provide $115 million in grants to provide support to build housing for low income seniors. These are things that impact the demand side of buying a home, meaning how easy it is for people to get the money to go out and buy a home. But then the White House also talks about how they want to impact the supply side of homes by working to increase the supply of homes available for sale. And then they also touch on how they want to help renters. 
So let me start by talking about the supply side. The White House is creating $225 million of funding to support manufacturing housing communities and create new financing options to make it more affordable for you to get a loan to buy one of these manufactured homes. And they want to increase the loan limits for manufacturing housing loans. And finally, this leaves the White House's plan to help people who are renters. First, the government wants to ban certain fees on public housing. Second, they want to ensure that if you are a military service member, that you can continue having your tenant rights. Third, this one's a little unclear and vague, but it kind of sounds like they want to make evictions a little bit more difficult. And finally, it says they want to promote prospective renters' rights during the tenant screening process. Essentially, they want to prevent discrimination during the screening process. So all in all, what does this mean? It sounds like the White House wants to support low-income individuals, potentially be able to qualify for a loan or to create more low-income housing available. And when it comes to the renters' rights, Really not that much of a differentiation, but I do want to dig deeper to see what the White House wants to do when it comes to evictions, because that's a very localized process. For example, evicting somebody in California is a lot more difficult than evicting somebody in Texas. And finally, this brings us to number three. How do you actually make housing more affordable? Now, let me start this with a little bit more theoretical, maybe a little bit more controversial topic, which is who should be able to buy a home? Because the problem is a lot of people want to hope and assume that everybody should be able to buy a home. And this was actually the pitch during the early and mid 2000s. But the problem with that is when people who can't afford to buy a home suddenly get money or programs to buy a home, that generally leads to more problems. So if somebody is not making enough money to buy a home and now you go out and buy a home and now you have this mortgage payment that you have to keep up with. And let's just say that the home value goes down in value what is somebody's incentive to keep making payments on this home, especially if they don't have the best financial record? Meaning, let's say they don't have a lot of savings. And so now you don't have a lot of cash to fall back on. Something happens to the economy. Maybe you lose your job for a little while and you can't keep making payments on your home. If your home is underwater, well, now you get stuck. This is why you don't want everybody to be able to qualify for a home. You want people who are qualified to buy a home to be able to buy a home. And this is difficult because, well, there's a lot of kind of emotion tied to this idea of home ownership, that everybody should be able to have a home. Everybody should be able to buy a home and build this generational wealth. And yes, you should be able to if you can afford it. But the problem is if you can't afford to buy a home, then you probably shouldn't buy a home because that can lead to a lot of financial issues and financial stress, because now if you come in with a very low down payment, not only do you have to pay a lot of other fees, such as PMI, you could also be hit with higher interest rates, and now you have no skin in the game. So now if home prices start to go down and you go underwater on your property, well, now you have less incentive to stay in that property. Not to mention the fact that if you don't have any savings, it can be harder for you to keep up with well, maintenance and repairs and other unexpected expenses that come with home ownership because that's a part of life with home ownership. So making homes affordable by giving people who can't afford a home money to buy a home can sometimes lead to more financial issues. The second part of this is if you really want to make housing more affordable, what you have to understand is that there are two parts to housing affordability. You have demand and supply. And right now we are in an environment where there's more demand than supply of homes. This is kind of just what the environment has been for the last number of years. So when you are in an environment where everybody wants to buy a home, but there's not that many homes for a sale, this creates more buyers than sellers, which means that when you have this home available for sale in this nice neighborhood, that's a good property, lots of buyers want that home. So lots of buyers make an offer. When you have multiple buyers making an offer for one home, that generally pushes the prices of homes up. But when you have the opposite, when you have more homes for sale than buyers out there, well, now you have sellers that are trying to compete against each other to get one of the few buyers. And now when you have two or three or four or 10 really good homes for sale and you have two buyers, now these sellers have to compete against each other to get this buyer interested in making an offer for their home. How do the sellers compete? Well, you offer better concessions or you lower the purchase price. That's how housing markets move. And right now we're in an environment where even though interest rates have gone higher, there's still a lot of demand out there. People still have money. There's some people that are really struggling in this economy, but you still have a lot of people that are sitting on cash that are waiting to buy a home. They have this pent up demand to buy a home. And this is creating a lot of dilemma and kind of confusion on the interest rate side because the Federal Reserve Bank's hope by raising interest rates was to cool down demand, especially for the housing market. 
because, well, housing makes up a big part of our CPI, our inflation numbers. And so now, when you are in an environment where home prices are still rising across the country, that puts upper pressure on inflation. Now, here we have an environment where the Federal Reserve Bank wants to lower interest rates. But at the same time, if they lower interest rates, they don't want to make the inflation problem worse. This is where we have to pay attention to what's going on in the economy. Because if we continue to see a very hot economy, then it's going to make it harder to see interest rates actually go down. But if we start to see a slowdown in the economy where people start to lose their jobs, well, that would be painful for some people, but that would also make the housing market a little bit more cool. Because if you have less people with jobs, less people can make offers for homes. If less people are making offers for homes, that's less demand for homes in a time where the supply is low. So if demand is coming down, that creates more of the equilibrium between demand and supply. And that's one of the things that the Federal Reserve Bank is paying attention to. So when it comes to how do you make housing more affordable, you have to work either on the demand side or the supply side. And right now, we have still this limited inventory of homes for sale. It takes time to build more homes, but what we've been seeing is that demand has slowly been coming down while supply has slowly been trickling upwards. We're not at the equilibrium yet, but supply has come up from where we were two years ago and demand has come down from where we were two years ago. So we're closer to equilibrium. And if interest rates stay higher for longer, that will put more pressure on the economy and that will put more pressure on the demand side of home buyers. So that would push demand a little bit lower. And if we continue to see more inventory being built and more sellers selling their homes, that would push us closer to equilibrium. But what a lot of people kind of get antsy on is, are we going to see a housing market crash tomorrow? What's going to happen to the housing market in two months? But you got to also remember, the housing market moves a lot slower than the stock market does. The stock market is much more emotional. You can buy and sell a stock in the blink of an eye. When it comes to real estate, it could take 30, 60, 90, 120 days to do one real estate transaction. And so the housing market moves significantly slower than the stock market does. But this is where if you want to get a picture of what might be coming in the housing market in the future, you want to also understand what's going on in the economy. Because if people have jobs and incomes are rising, that will continue to produce more demand in the housing market. But if we start to see a slowdown in the economic side and people's incomes are not rising fast enough, eventually that's going to have people saying, you know what, I can't afford this housing market anymore. I'm going to sit back on the sidelines. But when it comes to you potentially buying a home, what I want you to understand is instead of you trying to time the market, just make sure you can afford the home that you're going to buy. Nothing wrong with buying a home. Nothing wrong with renting a home. Just make sure you can afford when you buy. If you want to afford the home, that means number one, afford the down payment. Number two, afford the multi payment. And number three, afford the move-in costs because, well, when it comes time for you to close on the home, not only do you have to move into the home, you're going to want to get furniture. You might want to make upgrades. Make sure you can afford that. And that these three things do not break the bank and they do not sacrifice your ability to actually invest your money into other assets because the last thing that you want to do is now you go out and buy a home and because you have all your money going into your mortgage payment, your property taxes, your insurance, your maintenance, and your upgrades, you have no money left over to invest anywhere else. That defeats the purpose of going out and buying a home. Your home is one of the worst ways to build generational wealth, although it is a nice thing to have. It's nice to have a paid off home, but I want you to have assets, not just a paid off home. I want you to have your home, that's great, but I want you to have other assets that can pay you without you having to sell the place that you live. That way you can continue to produce income without you having to sell the place that you live and you can produce income without you having to work. That's what financial education is all about. But it starts with you understanding now what's going on in the housing market and what you need to do to be able to afford the home that you live in. First, you separate the value of the property versus the land. So you bought this property for $200,000. Let's assume that the land that this property is sitting on, the land that this home is sitting on is worth, I don't know, $20,000. So this building itself, the home, the actual property is worth $180,000. Well, what the IRS 